His Excellency the Governor, uh, Premier uh, uh, Deputy Premier, uh, Minister Pequen, members of the House of Assembly, uh, Chief Agricultural Officer, Senior Government Officials, uh, Pastor Naaman Chalwell, farmers, handicraft entrepreneurs, and those listening to us uh, via radio, and those uh, viewing via uh, television, and to you uh, who have uh, gathered here uh, for this uh, occasion, uh, we say good morning and uh, thank you uh, for being here. God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble Queen. God save O Queen, sent a victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us. God save O Queen. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. And we, we have had a number of discussions regarding uh, 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 building a, a world-class uh, public service. But, but I, I, I can't help but say when you have officers like uh, uh, Mrs. Penn that you could call on on a moment's notice, I think we probably already have a public a world-class public service. Thank you very much. All right, um, we will now call on Pastor Naaman Chalwell uh, to invoke God's uh, presence. Let us bow our heads together. Almighty God, the everlasting Father, we come to you today. We are excited about your goodness and your mercies that has brought us together today on this occasion. Another week, you we have farmers week begin today we thank you because you had granted it unto us we have seen your mercies with us we have seen your favor upon us we ask lord that as we go through this procedure today that as the folks will vote and view all the good things that have been with us today they will recognize that indeed you are still with us you are still our help, and you are still our strength. We want to give you honor and praise today because it belongs to your name. We ask you to favor the farmers one more time, one more year. Grant them the early and the latter rain so that production can grow and we can benefit from their production. We ask you, Lord, that you would open new avenues and ways of technology, new ways in which they can grow, that which we so long for to help to sustain our bodies. We pray that you give them the wisdom from the department, the ministry, to direct them into the channel, in the avenue in which we needed to go. You are always ahead of us. You are always a step ahead of us, providing and making ways for us. We ask you to let this year be a special year unto the farmers through your grace and your mercies that your people will rejoice, that your people would praise you, that your people would give you the honor that is due to your name. We thank you, Lord, for this day, and we thank you for the proceeding that is about to take place. Be it unto you all the glory and the praise we ask this in no other name, but the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We say, Amen. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Chalwell. Um, I think you would have received uh, the, your booklet. Are we going to uh, stand, uh, join our voices, and uh, sing the song, Yes, God is Good. And while we're preparing to do that, I just want to recognize the presence of uh, uh, well, 
She's affectionately known as Miss P. Um, as the uh, former uh, minister for this subject, it, it's good to see you here. All right, let's stand and uh, sing. Ocean depths and spreading wood, 10,000 voices seem to cry. God us all and God is good. The sun that keeps his trembling sway and down his golden flood. The sparkling host all seem to say in accent clear that God is good. The merry birds prolong the strain, their song with every spring renewed. And balmy air and falling rain, it softly whisper God is good. I hear it in the rushing breeze, the hills that have for ages stood, the echoing sky and roaring seas, as well the chorus God is good. Yes, God is good, all nature says, by God's own hand in speech in good. And man in loud, the notes of praise, should sing for joy that God is good. For all thy gifts, Bless the Lord. Thy pardon, grace, thy quickening word, this prompt a song that God is good. Thank you very much. Uh, you may be seated. And uh, without any further ado, I will now call to the podium our Premier and Minister for Finance, Dr. The, Honor the Honorable D. Orlando Smith, OBE, to give us remarks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Smith, and good like to say please good morning to all gathered here. I'd like to recognize His Excellency the Governor, Mr. Boyd McCleary, the Minister of Natural Resources, our host, um, Dr. The Honorable Kedrick Pickering, the Minister of Health, the Honorable Ross Felton, the other members of the House of Assembly were here, uh, Honorable Archie Christian, and uh, Honorable Alva Majuro, and also Pastor and um, the Honorable Mr. Foy, and Mr. Marlon Penn. Anyone else? And also recognize past legislators, I see uh, Mr. Keith Flax is here. Thank you for coming. I'd also like to especially recognize the farmers who are here and also the school children. Before I say anything else, I want to apologize for holding up the ceremony. I was here on time, but I saw no activity here. And so I was looking around and seeing what was going on. And um, I saw many items being set up. And one of the things I want to, one of the persons I want to mention is I saw Mr. Pickering, Dwight Pickering coming in, setting up his, um, his stall. The reason why I wanted to mention was Dwight Pickering is that uh, about a year ago, Mr. Pickering gave me some products, produce from his, his ground, basically a let, uh, some lettuce, which I found very, very, very nice indeed. And then he did the same thing again a few weeks after that. And I think that stimulated me to start in my own home garden. And I do have a garden now, and I produce quite a lot of stuff I can share with my, my neighbors. 
And um, I was told by my wife that she never tasted such good cucumbers. <laughs> now, as most of us around my age range, we were um, involved in agriculture as we grew up. Those are the days of subsistence farming. <clears throat> and I will well remember <clears throat> and I will remember accompanying my father to Coxith before sunrise to work in the ground to have his crops, then venture out to sea to pull out to pull out to pull our fish pots. Later in the day we take our animals to the well for water before leaving them to graze the pastures. And although my mother stayed at home, I know that many women in those days had the, also had the agricultural experience. In those days, we also burned and picked charcoal, cut and scraped Marby back, and some of us processed cane rum as well. Ladies and gentlemen, those were the days when we heavily depended, when we depended heavily on the bountiful harvest of fish, livestock, fruits, and vegetables, which filled the market square on a daily basis, and especially on weekends. Those are the days also when we socialized more, because we had few telephones, and no computers, and things like that. Today, our modus operandi has changed, has shifted. But it's time for us to change course, where public and private organizations and the rest of the community should be working more closely with farmers to bolster the agricultural sector. We see an opportunity to work with farmers through the Ministry of Natural Resources and Labor and the Department of Agriculture to reinvigorate and develop a regular farmer's market where residents and visitors can purchase fresh product directly from farmers. We also see an opportunity to move forward with developing a national agricultural policy and introducing agribusiness development legislation to promote agriculture as a viable profession in the Virgin Islands. An opportunity also to explore various means to which our farmers can find local and regional markets for their livestock and crops. We see this not being in, done in isolation, but rather to, to using expert advice. Equally important, we also see the need to diversify this economy. We know that tourism and financial services has long been the foundation of prosperity but as we all know, food security is essential to the sustained growth, development, and survival of our territory. You may recall that we campaigned on the issue of an adequate, affordable water supply to farmers. And in our previous term of office, we made every effort to solve the water woes of farmers. Parakita Bay wells had been reactivated, and water tanks were imported and distributed to farmers. All, all as a part of our national program to assist farmers. So here we are again, five years later, and I'm here to tell you that we are committed to solving these water problems once again. We are committed to fixing the economy, to improving the standard of living for all, and we are committed to improving the quality of life, and committed to building a sustainable Virgin Islanders. Virgin Islanders. We see agriculture and deed for Islands as a way to strengthen our economic base and to take make our territory more financially secure to stand the fluctuation of the global economy. We see the need to work closely with farmers to empower them to produce more, sell more to local markets, and export some of their products to our regional neighbors. We also see the need for businesses to support and purchase goods directly from farmers for resale to our supermarket buyers, restaurants, and other places that contribute to our tourism product. Agriculture, ladies and gentlemen, for this government is about promoting the produce of our farmers all year round. Whether it's livestock farming, poultry farming, crop farming, fishing, gardening, we are in full support. Farmers Week, we see as an opportunity to remind each other that we must support our local farmers. We are here today and for the rest of next week to witness the grand showcase throughout the territory of fruits, vegetables, preserves, livestock, and we can't forget the handicraft as well. This is just a mere glimpse of a farmer's hard work. We, ap we appreciate what they do to keep the spirit of agriculture constant in our minds for generations to come. I challenge our young people to learn about the many career opportunities in agriculture and related fields. 
I commend schools and teachers of initiated school garden programs to expose students to the importance of agriculture and encourage others to get on board. Let me also encourage families to start backyard gardens to be self-sufficient. Restauranters, support of farmers, and highlight on your menus the word fresh and local to assist with boosting our tourism product. Supermarkets, hoteliers, you can do your part in helping us to take agriculture to an even higher level. To the Ministry and Department of Agriculture, we will do what we can to upgrade the agricultural sector. Our goal is to find ways to improve access to technical assistance, provide exposure to the use of modern technology, prevent more information for implemented best practices, and support training for farmers in areas such as scanning, processing, drying, freezing, among other initiatives. Perhaps more importantly, I also want to link agriculture with our tourism product. And in this regard, I'm committed to promoting a, what I call a local farm-to-table program. <clears throat> I'm committed to training our finest produce and our finest restaurants to demonstrate that the most delicious food that the Virgin Islands can produce can be grown right here and not imported. I've seen this program work in other areas, other islands in the Caribbean. I'm confident that with the assistance and cooperation of our restaurants, we can do the same thing here and boost our agricultural product. I commend the Agriculture Department for keeping Farmers Week alive for 20 years and look forward to celebrating many more. I'd like now also to recognize the passion that my colleague, the Honorable Dr. Kedrick Pickering, the Minister of Natural Resources, has for farming. I know that he was involved with it as well when, we, when he was a youngster. So I know he's passionate about farming. And I join with him in honoring the hard work of these men and women of these Virgin Islands to do whatever is necessary to ensure their sustainability. In advance, I'd also like to congratulate all participants who will win in the various categories over the next few days. So on behalf of my government, I wish everyone, including the young people and children, an exciting and interesting agricultural week of activities. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Premier. And I think uh, we all now have a challenge. Uh, next uh, uh, year, uh, Mr. Bratwit and myself come in to judge your backyard garden. Uh, so, look out for us, uh, uh, Governor, we, we come in. <laughs> so get your garden started. Uh, we will move uh, right along because I know that uh, uh, the Premier and others have uh, other matters waiting. And we will call on uh, the Little Lighthouse Preschool to do a selection.
and uh, we want to acknowledge the uh, pres presence of the Minister for Education and Culture, Minister Walwyn. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. All right, our, our next uh, speaker. Um, it, do you guys remember a long time ago, it seemed like way, way back when, there was a song that says about this uh, tailor. I know, I know Ms. P could help me on this. You, you show him the corner where the person passed and he make the suit. Am I the only one remembering that song? Mister, you remember? Mr. Mr. Brathwaite gets things done even before I think about it. Usually when I call Mr. Brathwaite about uh, something that we need uh, uh, to get done, um, most times he's already on it. As, as a matter of fact, he'll probably kill me for this. But I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, a former minister had a nickname for Mr. between he and I for Mr. Brathwaite. And we basically would call him the bulldozer. I mean, you, uh, you, you, you talk about the action man running out of work. I was afraid that he would run out of work. Um, Miss, Mr. Brathwaite has been a breath in my opinion. I'm basically giving you my opinion, not that of the ministry uh, per se. Uh, a breath of fresh air to this uh, department. Um, he has invigorated it, he's revitalized it, he's put new energies um, in it, and uh, most of the time I think he's going to drop me down trying to keep up. But at any rate, I am I'm very proud uh, to have somebody like Mr. Brathwaite uh, as a teammate and, and certainly as, as, as a friend, because I do consider him a friend. Um, and so without any further ado, and uh, before... I embarrass him anymore. I will call Mr. Brathwaite uh, to the podium to give uh, his remarks. Mr. Brathwaite. Good morning. I'm not sure if I am deserving of all what was said before, but I'll accept it. <laughs> I too wish to acknowledge the protocol already established. Agriculture has had its challenges in the past and is currently facing new ones. But we are determined to succeed through resilience, creativity, and strength provided by the grace of God and the example set by our hardworking ancestors. The constraints, challenges, and realities that confront the Department of Agriculture and the farming community at this crucial moment are numerous, diverse, and includes, one, a growing population, shrinking domestic agriculture, and a chronic reliance on imported food. Two, increased developmental demand pressure on the national water supply on our traditional agricultural lands, on government resources, financial or other, together with reduced funding from the private sector. Three, more frequent occurrences of natural disaster, especially flooding. Four, unfair competition from cheaper imports, unyielding markets for local produce, and a high incidence of Friedel Lassny. Five, rising cost of agricultural inputs, including animal feed, farm implements, seeds, fertilizers, and pest control products. Six, an aging farming community and reluctance of young school leavers to seek a career in agriculture. Some of these are mostly out of our control. However, we can, through unity, functional cooperation, and acceptance of available technology, ensure sustainable agricultural production as a policy vehicle for food, self-reliance, and security. Farmers' unity and constant functional cooperation not only within the farming community, but also with the Department of Agriculture is the only way that we can overcome the difficulties 
facing agriculture. BVI communities in the past survived and thrived because of an inherited, inherent sense of unity, selfishness, cooperation, pure love of country, and plain common sense. We effectively used the advantages intrinsic to a small community, instant communication, simplicity, and looking out for one another. Farmers united as association, cooperatives, organizations, etc., will be able to import inputs more cheaply, request more and better con concessions from government, attract profitable market access, and help build the institutions that are so vital to developing an agricultural industry. The potential benefits are infinite, and the ultimate outcome will be self-reliance for our farmers. The process will take genuine effort on the part of many persons, but if the BVI is to achieve significant food security, the farmers must be self-reliant to a meaningful extent. The Department of Agriculture is ready and willing to advise and guide farmers in the proper procedure and policies associated with the establishment of functional farmers, organizations, cooperatives, or associations. Meanwhile, the department has made efforts in crucial areas with an eye to the future. These initiatives reflect the philosophy that guides the department that we are focused on the direction and quality more than quantity. They include, one, livestock breeding program involving the introduction of new, more productive bloodlines of sheep, goat, cattle, rabbits, and pigs. This will provide fresh breeding stock for livestock farmers. Rehabilitation of the national abattoir to ensure improved sanitation and facilitate meat inspection, certification, and wholesomeness for the consuming public. Three, increase to a useful degree the laboratory diagnostic capacity of the veterinary division in order to monitor animal and veterinary public health diseases of significance. Four, started discussions with the Department of Conservation and Fisheries on the BVI's potential for fish and seafood farming. Five, strengthened the Dog Prevention of Injury to Humans, Poultry and Livestock Act and increased the capacity of the BVI Dog Control Program. Six, strengthened quarantine and border control to prevent the introduction of exotic diseases and pests of animals, crops, and human significance. And seven, strengthened crop production and protection through quarterly workshop series. In light of the population, realities, and needs of the 21st century, the introduction of technology is necessary to supplement traditional production and sustain the food security of the BVI. To that end, greenhouse agriculture is being introduced. Those methods will be transferable, farmer-friendly, pose no health risk to consumers, and could actually benefit the marketing of field-grown produce as part of an overall marketing strategy. In fact, aside from obvious advantages, increased yield, less labor, less pests, and reduced use of pesticides, greenhouse technology can also help facilitate the introduction of new niche crops, which may field adapt to traditional farming. Greenhouses and spent water can be used synergetic with fish farming technology 
a system used in numerous countries where water is limited for fish production. These activities are aimed at giving the farmers, consumers, and other interests optimal support as, part in the, as partners in building an orderly agricultural industry in the BVI. Be assured that the department will consult continually, especially with our farmers and other relevant parties in order to chart a definitive direction for BVI agriculture. Finally, allow me to thank all the farmers for their hard work and patience. And I thank you all. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Brathwaite. I would like to uh, acknowledge the pres presence of the, I think, Dr. Dawson is just on the side here. Thank you very much, sir, uh, our college, our pre college president. And I think at the back, I just noticed um, Director of uh, Social Security, Antoinette uh, Skelton. And I believe I saw P.S. Thompson coming in a little, oh, right there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we will have our next item is the uh, skit by the Francis Letson Primary School. And, and while, they, while they're getting ready to come, I understand that all of the members for the high school uh, uh, band, the Elmo Stout High School band, they're all here. And um, it wouldn't be the national anthem, obviously, but we're going to give them an opportunity uh, to play the steel pan. Um, I mean, I, I like to hear the steel pan anyway, so uh, we'll give them an opportunity to do that. So as soon as the uh, Francis Letson Primary School is finished with their skit, then we'll be rendered with a selection by the Elmo Stout High School. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, thank you very much. Uh, they're not quite ready yet, so in uh, the interest of time, uh, we're going to uh, move to the next item, but we will give them an opportunity to uh, uh, perform. Um, the next item on our agenda is for the uh, minister uh, for this subject and I to come in and give his address. And I believe, um, again, my personal opinion, uh, that this ministry has been blessed with persons who were uh, uh, very much uh, keen on seeing the agricultural industry moving forward. So I now call to the podium Dr. the Honorable Kedrick D. Pickren, Deputy Premier, uh, Minister for Natural Resources and Labor, and also the representative for this district. Dr. Pickren. Thank you, Mr. Berkeley. Your Excellency, the Governor, Honorable Premier, Minister of Education and Culture, the Minister of Health and Social Services, other members of the House of Assembly, past legislators, senior government officials, retired and present, senior citizens, good to see all of you, students, even better to see you here, Ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good morning to all of you. Oh, I love that good morning. In 2003, I had the opportunity to attend a conference in a place called Dakar in Bangladesh. And I was privileged to be a member of a panel that was discussing the question of the Millennium Goals of the United Nations attainable. And in 2009, September 2000, the leaders from 193 countries around the world signed the United Nations Millennium Declaration and committed the international community to fulfill eight goals. These were termed the Millennium development goals by the year 2015. And the first of these goals is the eradication of hunger and the poverty. The number of hungry people in the world remains unacceptably high. Despite recent gains that have pushed the figure below 1 billion. In the year 2010, it was estimated that the number of people suffering from chronic hunger was 925 million. And the Food and Agricultural Organization recognized hunger as the single most important global issue of concern. While the issue of chronic hunger may seem foreign to our islands, it is something that we certainly must keep at the forefront of our minds. Now in our country on any given day, we can leave our homes and walk into the supermarket and select from a range of food items. But my friends, this is a privilege that many of us often take for granted. And as the Virgin Islands are highly dependent as the Virgin Islands are highly dependent on external sources of food supplies, it is conceivable that we can become a part of the frightening statistics that if something happens outside of our control in which we, we are not favored from our visit by tropical or Crowley shipping agents, we could have a serious problem on our hands with respect to our food supply. It is also reasonable to say that our situation is further compounded by the fact that our concern is not only about the 30,000 residents or so that make up our country, but also the thousands of individuals that visit our shores every year. Tourism, my friends, is therefore inextricably linked to our ability to ensure that the quantity and quality of food remains at acceptable levels. Way back in the 18th century, Thomas Jefferson told George Washington, and I quote, that agriculture is our wisest pursuit because it will in the end contribute most to real wealth, good morals, and happiness, unquote. 
Agriculture feeds the world and farming is part of the foundation that has brought the Virgin Islands to where it is today. And I want to pause here for a moment because when I was a youngster growing up, just on the other side of the mountain in Josiah's Bay with my grandfather, we had a fairly big farm over there and I remember only too well it wasn't agriculture or farmers week, it was exhibition day. I'm sure all the seniors here remember that. Exhibition day was a big thing in the BVI in those days. And I, I remember only too well with my other cousins, one of whom I see with a farm, with his produce here today, trotting over the mountain via spring, got down here with our bowls and heifers and other our little produce to show off our produce on um, exhibition day. So we can see that clearly despite the challenges, the future of agriculture in the Virgin Islands must continue, but we must look at it from a different perspective and we must entertain the idea of diversity if we are going to be self-sufficient. So looking back over the last 50 years, we see that some progress has been made in the agricultural industry in the Virgin Islands because since the turn of the century there has been a shift from plowing the land with hopiks. And I know some of you don't believe this because I have to remind people every now and again that I didn't grow up with a necktie around my neck. Some people think that, you know, what you are today is what you have always been. But I spent some tough days in Josiah with my grandfather down in the sandy bottom throwing some hopik in the sand. Oftentimes I have to tell people I could take care of myself. But we've come a long way since those days plowing the land with hopiks. We now have computerized tractors which we now use to prepare the soil for planting. We have heavy duty equipment now create flat areas even on the, the hillsides where agriculture production and modern pig and chicken processing plants can be used. And these are demonstrating the technological advancements that have been embraced by some of our farmers. And although the local village market remains in some ways a part, integral part of the marketing mix, most of the agricultural produce are sold directly to our supermarkets and we hope to the hotels and restaurants, as the Premier just pointed out. It is the hope and aspiration of the Department of Agriculture to continually assist and increase the ability to help those who farm to find ready markets to sell their produce. And so the theme for, for this year, celebrating 20 years of BVI culture through agriculture, speaks to the milestone that the farmers and the Department of Agriculture have achieved. They have consistently promoted and sustained the agricultural element of our Virgin Islands heritage. But we need to look to the future. And looking towards the future, I think we all can envision a Virgin Islands that is more self-sufficient. We have the means to do it. We just need to adopt the attitude to make it happen. There have been various initiatives that have been implemented over the years within the Department of Agriculture. And we will continue to use these as stepping stones to advance our farmers. The Ministry and the Department of Agriculture will continue to encourage large-scale production of food and to offer assistance wherever this is possible and certainly where it is necessary. We encourage you to see agricultural industry as a component of trade and a very important aspect of the business sector. The Virgin Islands has a thriving tourism industry and I'm sure we will recognize that that provides for us a ready market for home agricultural products. We have many opportunities that we can access and we need to exploit these opportunities. Over the Christmas vacation I had the opportunity to have dinner with some some folks who are investing in the development at Oil Not Bay. And they had a very keen interest in learning about the guava berry. Because they, they hail from the northern plains of Canada. 
and they wanted to learn something more about what is unique about the Virgin Islands. And so we were talking about something that is very topical at and around the time of Christmas. And uh, they were delighted when a few days later we sent them a small gift of some guava berry syrup and some guava berry liqueur. And they think it was the greatest thing that has happened to them on their vacation. And I said that to amplify the point that with a, a tourism industry like we have, we now need to find the ways and the means to encourage the development of what is unique to the Virgin Islands. Thank you, Ms. P. I see you shaking your head with a, in a sense of approval. I appreciate that. And to make sure that we, we no longer think just simply in terms of, you know, the pumpkin and the potatoes and what have you, but how now we can develop these products, refine them in a way that is attractive to our visitors. Because if you, if you have done any traveling in your life, you know that one of the most important things is when you go to a new country, you want to take back something that is unique to that country. And so we've got to change our thought processes. We've got to change our approach, our attitudes, to understand that the way we've done things, it has worked. But in a new world, in a new paradigm, we need to have different approaches. And we've got to develop those things that are unique to the country and put them in a, in a position that we can market them to be able to sell to our visitors. The Chief Agricultural Officer just mentioned about the greenhouses. And I'm sure it's a topical question. The, the investments that have been made in the greenhouse technology is something that we have to build upon. If we are going to be able to sustain the agricultural sector and to improve and to ensure that our territory becomes more competitive and if we are going to be self-sustaining, in the use of the technology that the greenhouses can produce. So whatever the challenges that we may face with the project that has been started, we've got to find ways to ensure that the greenhouse technology can be used and eventually work to produce the products that it is designed to produce. I, I say this from time to time. If they can produce the quantity of food that they produce in the deserts in Israel, there's no reason why we can't produce food in the needed quantities that we here in the Virgin Islands deserve. But we have to use a mixture of what we have known, what we now know, and the emerging technologies that are before us. Agriculture cannot remain stagnant. The farmers who have been working are known for their hard work, their discipline, consistency, and perseverance. And I have no doubt that our farmers will continue to rise to the challenge. And there's much that can be said about those among us that produce food for our consumption. I applaud their efforts, both past and present. I remember only too well my own grandfather had one of the largest sugar clean plantation in Josiah's Bay. And every now and again, I, I go to Josiah's Bay and I think back that what an opportune time now for us to have that particular institution with sugar cane growing in Josiah's Bay because the local rum that we used to produce, that good old cane rum, I, I remember smelling it. Of course, the older people used to tell you, buy amongst your sex when you um, try to, to smell that, that cane rum. But I remember those days, and I see one or two Dimijans in the back there by Mr. Herbert. We used to have a lot of those. But in today's BVI, when I think about it, and I think to myself, you know, that's an industry we could revive, if only for the sake of producing the rum that will be unique to these Virgin Islands. And it is something that we need to think about. So I applaud the efforts of our farmers who are here and those who have gone before us in trying to produce food for the members of our community. We in the ministry and the Department of Agriculture would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you who are here today. 
And we implore you to continue to, as you walk around, to view the stalls. Because Visiting Farmers Week exhibition has become an annual tradition within the territory. And it now forms part of our history, the history of our people. And I hope I just give you a small bit of that history that is a part of my own upbringing and my own heritage. And so at this time, I would like to extend heartfelt congratulations to the winners. And I look forward to an exciting week of activities. Take this opportunity to officially declare Agricultural Farmers Week open. God bless you. And God continue to bless these Virgin Islands. Thank you. All right, uh, moving right along. Um, uh, what we've uh, uh, been waiting for, and I know everybody is anxious to see who's uh, made it to the top of the list in terms of their farming skills. I will now call on uh, Ms. Uh, Thomas, who will spearhead the... Uh, portion of this ceremony in terms of giving out the uh, prizes to our farmers. Uh, Ms. Thomas? The first award that we'll be giving out to will be the Agricultural Science Project Competition. Second prize was the Elmo Stout High School. Anyone for the high school? The winner of the Agricultural Science Project Competition was the Claudia Creaky Educational Center in Anigara. Okay, we're going to take that one and again. Special participation prize goes to the Eslin Richards Line Learning Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Anyone for them? Okay. Best school garden goes to the Elmo Stout Education. Elmo Stout High School. Somebody for Elmo Stout High School again. Okay, we'll now get into the national awards. Best female farmer is sponsored by Edwin Adams, and the winner of that category is Mistress Aina Chalwell. <laughs> Best young farmer is sponsored by New Haven Corporate, and that award goes to Gregory Nelson II. Best Poultry Farmer is sponsored by Banco Popola, and the winner is Mistress Joy Abby. <laughs> Best Terrace Plot is sponsored by Fort Garden, and the winner is Mr. Aaron Hill. Best Crop Farmer is sponsored by Tortola Concrete Product, and the winner is, <coughs> sorry, Mr. Aaron Hill. Yeah. Best Female Farmer goes to Miss Aina Chalwell.
best all around effort is sponsored by LJDBI Block, and the winner is Mr. Aragon Decreed. Best Orchard Farmer is sponsored by Banco Papala, and the winner is Mr. Dwight Pickering. <laughs> Best Mixed Farmer is sponsored by National Bank of the Virgin Islands, goes to Mr. Kevin Williams. Backyard Farmer is sponsored by Tortola Concrete Product. Goes to Miss Tiomi Fred. <laughs> Best Pig Farmer is sponsored by DMB Trucking, and the winner is Mr. Brian Hodge. Best Livestock Farmer is sponsored by Nibs Auto Sales and Parks and Alaman Cadero and the winner is Mr. Brian Hodge. Best Parakeet Bay Farmer is sponsored by National Bank of the Virgin Islands and it goes to Mr. Alvin Martin. Best Orchard and Pineapple Farmer goes to Mr. Ashley Rita, which is sponsored by National Bank of the Virgin Islands. The next award would be given by Nagico Insurance. Anyone here representing Nagico? Champion Farmer for 2012 is Mr. Brian Hodge. which is sponsored by Nagical Insurance. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Thomas. Um, I would like to at this time acknowledge the presence of the Attorney General. Oh, he came around, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Christopher Malcolm. Uh, Dr. Christopher Malcolm, pleased to have you, sir. All right, our next item is the A drama group from the Elmo Stout uh, High School. Um, I understand that they're ready to take uh, Hollywood by storm, and even if that's not so, by the time I'm finished coaching them, I'm sure they will. He was a very proud creature. He was too proud to speak to the other animals. He held his head high and was only not to them. What's going on, Iguana? Hey, Trina, come on, come on, please. So she ain't talking to me. She going on that she the best thing God ever met. But I got news for she. The best thing is, ooh, ooh, ah, 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 a monkey dot. No, dog and Iguana were also not in acquaintances, you know. But with a kind of difference. You see? Dog passed by on his way every day to the old woman stall. 
when dog went to the old woman's kitchen, he wanted her to know that he was there. So, to draw her attention to him, he would rub up head against she leg. This annoyed the old woman very much. Iguana wanted to be more than an added acquaintance to Dad. He longed to be on speaking terms. The next day, when Dad passed by, Iguana tried. Dad, where you going? Ah, this dog won't speak to me. He won't tell me where he goes. You know what? This time I'll follow him and see where he's going.
dog entered the old woman's kitchen and rubbed hard against the old woman's leg. The bony ridge from iguana's back scratched up the old woman's leg in her. My son, she was hot. Look here, dog. Don't bother me today. Oh, so you come to hunt your back at me now? Imagine, this, this dog is ungrateful, you know. He'd come to my kitchen every day begging for food. And now he come to hunch back his back at me with his trippiness. Don't worry, I never left home without my beating stick. I'm going to go for it and come for you and give a good tongue down. Ah, you see what I just see a while ago? No, for real. Ah, you see what I just see? I swear I saw some buku jumbinis come out of that dog a while ago. No. You know what? I would have got I would have go after them, but I remember I'm an old old woman as you could see. I am not as young as I used to be. So I'm gonna just call it a day. Tomorrow is the next day. I'm gonna pack up my little things the man go. And so it went. The old woman went about her daily business again. Dog always came, but never like before. Everything was good in the village once again. I thank you very much. Um, I think that deserves another round of applause. Thank you. All right, I low call on uh, Ms. Uh, Sylvia Faulkner, uh, employee here at the Department of Agriculture, to do our vote of thanks. Pleasant good morning to everyone. I recognize the protocol already established. According to the writer G. B. Stern, Silent gratitude isn't much use to anyone. So today, on the behalf of the Chief Agricultural De Officer and the staff of the Department of Agriculture, it gives me great pleasure to stand here today to say thank you. Firstly, I must recognize and express uttermost gratitude to the Most High, who has given us the strong bodies, focused minds, determined hearts, and resilient spirits to reach this 20th year milestone in our Farmers Week celebrations. We thank him for spared lives and for traveling mercies throughout this festive week. Acknowledgement must be given to the, honor, the Dr. The Honorable Kedrick Pickering, the Minister for Natural Resources and Labor, who is committed to working closely with the Department of Agriculture and the agricultural industry is truly admirable. We understand that the economy has affected many businesses, and your support is greatly appreciated. We must also mention the supermarkets, restaurants, and consumers who regularly support our producers by buying local. Of the business community is the media who we would also like to express gratitude for promoting Farmers Week 2012. I would like to acknowledge the primary schools who took part in the Farmers Week theme and poster competition and also the secondary school whose students took part in the agricultural science competition. I would like to extend hearty congrats to the winning school, the Claudia Cricky Educational Center, for doing an exemplary job in the agricultural science competition. Today's entertainment has been so inspiring and wonderfully put on. And we thank all the performers for their preparation and for their input. We must also mention the persons who have submitted crafts, preserves, and pastries in these competitions. There are a lot more cultural displays and lively entertainment as the week continues. An early thank you is sent out to the persons who are yet to grace the stage of the Farmers Week 2012's activities. A special thank you is also extended to all vendors, exhibiting businesses, and also the government departments 
who are partnering with us to make agriculture exhibition so exciting. Farmers Week is a family and community event and your participation makes it a greater success. Of course, there's no way I could conclude today without thanking our farmers. To all of our producers, thank you. Farming today is not an easy job, but it is one of the most important roles in our territory. Your hard work over the years is recognized and immensely appreciated. These activities are all for you. To our audience and supporters, Farmers Week cannot be celebrated without you. Your support gave us the strength in forging for an even greater and better Farmers Week 2030. To anyone else who played a role in today's opening ceremony and in Farmers Week 2012, persons who have prayed, prepared food, trans been transported, ferried, and anyone who has have inadvertently been omitted, thank you for your time, your unwavering support, and your commitment. In closing, I would like to leave with you this quote from a letter from Thomas Jefferson to George Washington in 1787. Agriculture is our wise pursuit. Because of it, in the end, contribute must be real, most contribute mo most to real wealth, good morals, and happiness. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.